idea of an annual bereavement service is something that we've been doing for all the time I've been here, a couple of years, and we've had it on, um, on All Saints Day and tied it to that date rather than you know, being a particular night and, and leaving it at that. And that's been something that's been very well received by, um, by people who've lost loved ones. Um, and not just those, I make a point of inviting all of those who I've done a funeral for that year. Um, and a fair few of those will come, you know, and, and again, usually people who don't come to church but who, who felt that the funeral service was significant and felt that that um, was helpful to them. And then for this particular event, they felt that that was something that, you know, coming to church for made sense to them, and so they did. And then, perhaps more surprisingly for me, the number of people from the congregation who came who I wouldn't have associated as being bereaved, who'd lost loved ones before I came. And that was quite a surprise, you know, awareness that there are actually an awful lot more people affected by lost loved ones than you're perhaps initially aware of. Um, and that's maybe a way of trying to make that, you know, that link, that community level link whereby everyone's sitting in that church for, for that gone but not forgotten is the kind of phrase we've given for that service. Um, they're all in the same boat and a realisation that you know, there are actually a lot of people in, in the community who have been bereaved, often you know, losing their lifelong partner and now on their own. Um, so I guess there's that community, community involvement there. At the bereavement service, this sort of annual gone but not forgotten service, the first year I gave folk a stone when they came in and I suggested that they might want to lay the stone down at part of the service as symbolic of being able to lay down their grief um, and to light a candle. And so if you liked, the lighting of the candle was almost the, the thing that they could take away and to leave the stone. Whereas in fact, interestingly what happened is that the vast majority of people took the stones away and felt that very significant and, um, you know, made a point of saying, you know, I've still got that stone when I've seen them and that they, that was important for them, that they'd got to take something tangible away. Um, it was actually the, the kind of the opposite of what I was wanting, in the sense I was wanting to say to folk, you know, no, you don't have to keep carrying these things, you can leave them behind, and that for me was a part of the, the process. Um, and maybe that's indicative of a, of a change in, in our society to this, you know, increased memorialization and increased continuous remembrance and an inability to let go of things. You know, need of taking away the stone to keep something, to keep the memory going. Um, the opposite of what I'd wanted, but it, that was what people did, completely unasked. You know, in fact, the opposite of what they were asked to do, they took, took that away. It was the sense that part of this project has been trying to look at what rituals um, there might be that can help people through these times. Um, and I suppose one of the things that has occurred to me over and over again here is that people do have their, their rituals already and that perhaps part of it is about trying to see and work out what's happening and then perhaps to develop it slightly or perhaps to tweak it slightly but to recognise that people do, do already have their their processes and you know whether that is the fact that folk you know took away the stones instead of leaving them as I'd suggested you know thinking right well and so when I modified it my next year um, I gave people a leaf and invited folk to take the leaf away um, you know November All Saints Day you know a time the leaves have fallen from the trees and all sorts of nice images of you know autumn time and trees look dead but you know there'll come a time when the, the new the new life is seen on the branches um, but also I suppose my, me still wanting to get my kind of idea that um, there, there was a there was an impermanence about a leaf um, so saying yes you can take it away but you know don't trouble yourself if in a year's time the leaf has disintegrated or you know it's blown away or you've forgotten in a way that a stone that stone gets taken away and sits on the mantelpiece and then next year you know, another stone gets taken away and added to it. Um, 
So I suppose it was trying to recognise that people felt something good about taking away, that people feel good about having something tangible. A lack of ritual is that it, it is not satisfying to people. Um, that, you know, rightly or wrongly, but, you know, the idea of a very solid, intellectual, reformed, Protestant faith that doesn't need these, you know, these vain things um, isn't where most people are at. You know, there may well be some, you know, people who are quite happy to have a very, you know, rigid, intellectual, firm, solid belief that says, you know, I'm not worried about this person, they're gone, they're fine, this is just a shell, this is nothing, you know, the classic, you know, reformed thing that says, you know, the body is put in the ground with no ceremony, um, it doesn't work for people. Um, and people will create their own, and, and, and maybe that is where we have to look at what, what is being created, you know, whether it is the shrines that come up when a young man is stabbed or a car goes off the road and kills someone. With its candles, you know, people like candles. They like that sense that you can, whether it's the image that a flame can kind of exist in the way that a, a soul exists, that, you know, you can you sense it's there, but if you try to grab it and touch it, it's, you know, it's nothing. It's it's a way, um, whether it's the stones that people want to take away um, and not let go of, um, the photos that you know people hold on to, all point to a need to engage more. Um, and so often we find ourselves either condemning it or being completely unaware of it or a bit on the sidelines because it doesn't fit with, with our sense of what's happened there. Um, and I suppose I, I think there's an awful lot that we can learn that we can you know pay attention to what people are doing and, and I suppose it is these things that are, are the coping mechanisms that maybe can speak loudly to other people to allow people to say well these things do work and maybe we should incorporate them a bit more